Welcome to this LHSOA basketball training video. I'm Lee Sanders, and on behalf of the state office, we want to say thanks for what you do in gyms all across our state. We appreciate your professionalism and commitment to improve even in these challenging times. I'm excited to introduce Daniel Gotro, our video clinician. Daniel's the Lafayette basketball RCO and works field judge in the SEC, including an assignment in this year's SEC championship game. Daniel was also assigned to work the 2020 LHSAA Division I football championship game. In this video, I really like how Daniel discusses mechanics like positioning on the floor and philosophy, referee the defense, and RSBQ, rhythm speed, balance, quickness, in addition to judgment, correct, incorrect call. Enjoy the video, stay safe, and I hope to see you in a gym sometime soon. Proper mechanics put officials in the proper position to see the entire play. Often these mechanics are developed by other officials' mistakes. Mistakes are going to happen. They're part of the game. But officials who can learn from their own mistakes or learn from others can truly improve. Primary areas of responsibility are crucial to success as a basketball official. We want to be excellent officials in our primary areas of responsibility. The Southeastern Conference did a study in men's basketball in 2018 and 2019. Those studies show that officials' accuracy in the Southeastern Conference was close to 95% when officials called in their primary area of responsibility. The amazing thing about that study is that number decreased, the accuracy decreased below 70% when officials reached out of their primary. And finally, we want to work to develop a level of consistency. And by consistency, that means as a crew, that night we're working together, as an association through the season, and even in a bigger goal as the LHSOA, as we advance into the boys and girls playoffs that begin next month. And how do we, de how do we develop a level of consistency? One thing we work on here in Lafayette is the acronym RSBQ. And that acronym stands for rhythm, speed, balance, and quickness. And any time a player's RSBQ is affected, I believe a foul should be called. So let's take a look at some of the plays. Play number one. Play number one deals with a foul called in transition. We have an illegal screen called, which when we're looking at an illegal screen, we want to see time and distance. In my opinion, this offensive player, number four, gives the defender enough time and distance to make this a legal screen. This was called a foul. Uh, I would prefer that this foul would, would not be called as this is a legal screen. Again, I think as an official, we can work to get in better position. And I think we're, we're a little too close. As a trail, we want to be a trail official in this particular play. A few of our later plays, we'll talk about how the trail working closer to the rim can put us in better position to see. Play number two. Play number two deals with a second shot. We have an uh, offensive player going to the rim, and we have the ball going up in the air, and we have a foul called um, as we're as the offensive player is is going up for a rebound and it's called on the defense number 23. When we're looking at rhythm, speed, balance and quickness, does defender 23's hand in the back right there affect his quickness? In my opinion, the answer is no. So this is one I believe that we should have passed on 
Um, again, because we're looking at rhythm, speed, balance, and quickness. And this offensive players wasn't affected. Play number three. Play number three um, deals with a dribbler going to the rim. Now, I'll, I'll pause it right here. And one thing I think we need to get better as a group, okay, uh, is our the position of our trail in a three-man system. Uh, we are almost at the division line. And on this particular play, I would like to see our trail official um, work at the 28-foot line, which using the cursor is right here, okay, the, the top of the coach's box, and work downwards. So as we see this dribbler going to the rim, we have a foul called, and this is correctly ruled on the floor uh, for a hand check. Um, so we get the call right, but mechanically, as this dribbler takes the ball towards the division line, instead of us backing out and working as a trail, I'd like to see us work our way down, okay, work our way down below the 28-foot line. And I think this would, this would get our, our trails more active in three-person crews. So again, we're studying mechanics. This official is correct in ruling a foul. He's correct in ruling the foul on the floor. But I think mechanically we could improve. So again, sometimes we get the call right, okay? Again, this is in his area of response, primary area of responsibility. We get the call right, but we can maybe work to get our mechanics a little bit crisper. So we'll look at this play one more time in slow motion. We have a dribbler going to the rim. He's affected. The foul's on the floor. It's before the offensive player starts his upward motion. So it's a correct call on the floor, correctly ruled on the floor, but we could work to get in slightly better position. All right, play four is going to be a play where the, the offense is going to, uh, excuse me, we have a dribbler going to the rim, okay? We have a dribbler going to the rim. And again, let's take a look at our trail. He's backing out. Um, I know that, that uh, the, the sideline here is kind of tight, but I would prefer us to walk walk down and get an angle looking through players. So we have a dribbler going to the rim. And there's very minimal contact, okay? Uh, in my opinion, this isn't enough to support a foul, okay? This isn't enough to support a foul on this play. But one thing I think we can maybe do, we, we could work better mechanically, is as a trail official, look how far we are. Look how far we are from where this foul was called. The foul was called here by this official, and it was in the lane. Again, we talk about foul accuracy in our primary area of responsibility. This particular official reaches out of his primary area of responsibility, and I think that's what makes this an incorrect call. Again, as a trail official, we can work ourselves down to get a, band, you know, uh, to get a better angle to see. And again, I would be curious in talking to our lead official, what did he see? Um, because again, this is this is something that uh, even though it doesn't initiate in his primary, it ends up in his primary, and and we don't have a double whistle. So again, last two plays, looking at trail officials, working to get closer to the rim, 28-foot line and below. So we'll look at it one more time in slow motion after we know what we're looking at. We have a dribbler going to the rim. Takes off. We have a hand. Minimal contact, in my opinion, RSBQ is not affected. Play number five. Play number five deals with a ball thrown into the into the post. Okay, and we'll go ahead and freeze it right there. So we have a double whistle. Uh, this is correctly ruled, correctly ruled on the floor as a foul. Uh, two hands on the post player, and it's a whistle. Okay, but again. We get the call right, 100% correct, but what can we do to get better? Okay, what can we do to get better? So I'll, I'll run it back slowly, okay? And as, we, as they bring the ball up the floor, front court, let's look at the position of the lead official. So the ball is below the free throw line extended, okay? And our lead official is not in, in, in the camera's view, all right? We'd like to see this official close down, okay, so that when the ball is thrown into the post, Okay, so he's coming over. We could already be across the lane, okay, and into our rotation, all right? So, again, proper mechanics puts us in the proper position to see. 
Um, right here, we do have a foul. Again, it's correctly ruled, but I think when the ball's there, we can close down, and then when it's throw the, thrown to the post, we can work our way quickly over the lane to rotate to get in the proper position to see. So we'll look at it one more time in slow motion. Again, let's work to close down. Uh, we're, we're getting there, but if we're already there when the ball's thrown, we can come over. And, uh, again, we have a foul. We have a double whistle, correctly ruled um, uh, a foul, two hands on the post. And, uh, again, working, working on our mechanics. So our last two plays is a two-play vignette dealing with block charges. Um, block charge is not only the most difficult call to make in basketball, in my humble opinion, it's the most difficult call to make in all of sports. We'll go ahead. Play six <clears throat> deals with uh, really two post players in the post. Okay, so the ball's thrown there, and we'll go ahead and, and we'll freeze it. Mechanically um, and position wise, I really like where our officials are. Okay, maybe the league could, could step in, or, take a step in or so. Um, and and we'll we'll go back one or two frames. Okay, the ball is thrown. Um, the ball is going to be thrown into the post, right? And there's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. So when we're looking, when we're looking at competitive matchups, whose area of, of responsibility is this at this point? Well, I think we probably have coverage on both. But as this dribbler, okay, takes the ball towards the rim, we want to referee the defense. Okay, so we're here, there's contact, all right, and we have a whistle by our trail official. He, he's going to rule it a block. Uh, this play generated a ton of discussion in our local meeting. Uh, I agree with the, with, with the, with the block call. Uh, the reason why is I feel like the offensive player's head gets around the defender, which makes him, um, you know, get out of legal guarding position. Again, this is my opinion gets it out of legal guarding position, all right? Because remember, we don't have to be stationary to take a player control foul. We can move laterally as long as we stay in legal guarding position. But with these on-ball defenders in the lane, okay, we want to give the lead official first crack at this block charge play. Right here, we have a, we have a quick whistle by our trail official, correctly ruled. I would like to see him hold his whistle a second or two, give our lead official a chance to um, to rule on this play. Okay, give our lead official a chance to rule on this play. Um, and if not, then we need to come in uh, as a trail or maybe a slot official if if we're on the other side. Um, to, you know, then we can come in with a ruling. So correctly ruled on the court. Um, again, I would be curious if I was watching this game if this was if this was guys in my association why we didn't have a whistle as the lead. Um, my, my guess is that maybe our trail was a little too quick. Again, correctly ruled in my opinion. Um, I, think, I think possibly, again, slowing our whistle down um, might, might, might give us a better chance to be a little bit, uh, you know, just mechanically speaking. Um, but again, correctly ruled on the floor. Uh, nice job by this official um, of getting the call right. But again, I think we're always working to improve um, you know, you know, working to improve. So uh, our second uh, play of this two-play vignette on block charges, okay, um, uh, uh, is, is from the same game. And um, uh, I think when we, when we look at this play, again, it's another play that's correctly ruled a charge um, by the officials on the floor. This is a player control foul. Uh, defenders in legal guarding position. Uh, offensive player low, lowers his shoulder runs him over, and it's a charge. Um, so correctly ruled by our officials on the floor. Uh, but I think one thing we could do to improve, um, you know, as a, as a group is, or, or, you know, as an association, is we want to work hard. Uh, and, and again, this is a secondary defender um, as opposed to an, an on-ball defender in our first play, in our previous play. We want to give our lead officials, okay, we want to give our lead officials the, prime, the, the first crack, okay, uh, at all secondary defenders in the lane. Uh, our official, uh, again, our lead official gets it, gets it, I would say, as a trail official, and we'll look at it one time in slow motion. We'll look at it one time in slow motion. Um, 
uh, uh, our trail is going to have a, a somewhat of a quick whistle. Um, again, he's going charge. Uh, we we would prefer for our trail, who's right here, okay, to slow his whistle down, okay, and give lead first crack at it. And then if he has to come in, then he can rule on it. But as you can see, we have no hand up. We just come out and we're gonna we're gonna wipe off the shot and we're gonna and we're gonna bang a player control foul. Um, so guys, this is the last play of our of our training tape. Um, uh, just just a side note: all of these plays were taken from our from our championship games uh, from the from the 2019 2020 season. Um, all of the officials on here uh, are are top notch officials uh, representing each association throughout the state. So uh, the purpose of this. It's not to pick on them. They've all done an excellent job to get there. And I think if we're fair as officials, okay, we could look at any game we work, okay, any game we work, and we could pick one play or two plays that we could improve on, that, that uh, we can learn from. So, so the officials in this video, I want to thank you guys for your, for your, for your, for your learning plays, um, and, and I really appreciate your efforts. And then just to close it, I appreciate all of our officials throughout the state, their time, their effort in this 2020-2021 season, um, you know, to stay healthy, to continue to work games, and uh, to uh, continue to, uh, you know, uh, serve the LHSAA and the LHSOA in a, in a positive manner. So best of luck the rest of the way. Stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you.